there was chaos in the valley bottom as the horsemen drove a thousand paths through the scattered crossbowmen. Then there were only the mangled remnants of the Genoese mercenaries, their red and green jackets soaked with blood and their weapons lying broken in the mud. The horsemen, won easy victory under their belt, cheered themselves. Montjoie Saint-Denis, they shouted. Montjoie Saint-Denis. Hundreds of flags were being taken forward with the horsemen, threatening to overtake the Oriflamme, but the red ribboned knights guarding the sacred flag spurred ahead of the charge, shouting their challenge as they started up the slope towards the English, and so climbed from a valley floor that was now thick with charging horsemen. The remaining lances were lowered, the spurs went back, but some of the more sensible men who had waited behind for the next assault noted that there was no thunder of hoofs coming from the vast charge. It's turned to mud, Sir Guillaume said to no one in particular. Trappers and surcoats were spattered with the mud churned up by the hoofs from the low ground that had been softened by the rain. For a moment the charge seemed to flounder, then the leading horsemen broke out of the wet valley bottom to find better footing on the English hill. God was with them after all, and they screamed their war cry. Montjoie Saint-Denis! The drums were beating faster than ever, and the trumpets screamed to the sky as the horses climbed towards the mill. Fools, Guy Vexil said. Poor souls, Sir Guillaume said. What's happening? The king asked, wondering why his careful ordering of the battle lines had broken even before the fight proper had begun. But no one answered him. They just watched. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, Father Hobbs said, for it seemed as if half the horsemen of Christendom were coming up the hill. Into line, Wilskeet shouted. God be with you, the Earl of Northampton called, then went back to join his men at arms. Aim for the horses, John Armstrong ordered his men. Bastards rode down their own bowmen, Jake said in wonderment. So we'll kill the goddamn bastards, Thomas said vengefully. The charge was nearing the line of those Genoese who had died in the arrow storm. To Thomas, staring down the hill, the attack was a flurry of garish horse trappers and bright shields, of painted lances and streaming pennants, and now, because the horses had climbed out of the wet ground, every archer could hear the hooves that were louder even than the enemy's kettle drums. The ground was quivering so that Thomas could feel the vibration through the worn soles of his boots that had been a gift from Sir Guillaume. He looked for the three hawks, but could not see them, then forgot Sir Guillaume as his left leg went forward and his right arm hauled back. The arrow's feathers were beside his mouth, and he kissed them, then fixed his gaze on a man who carried a black and yellow shield. Now! Wilskeet shouted. The arrows climbed away, hissing as they went. Thomas put a second on his string, hauled and loosed, a third, this time picking out a man with a pig snout helmet decorated with red ribbons. He was aiming at the horses each time, hoping to drive the wicked edged blades through the padded trappers and deep into the animal's chests. A fourth arrow. He could see clods of grass and soil being thrown up behind the leading horses. The first arrow was still flying as he...